Hey, you. You're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? No, you're a soul destined to be thrust into the world of Tamriel as one of the ten playable races of the Elder Scrolls game series. But the big question on the tip of everyone's tongue is which race would you be? Which race is worth it? Is it worthwhile being an Argonian? Is it worthwhile being a Dark Elf? These are the questions that we endeavor to answer in this series of videos. What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and today I'm back to bring you a brand new episode of this Is It Worth It series. In the description are all the previous episodes and I will add in the future episodes as they are made. Now, of course, this kind of video has a lot of variables, including personal preference, but we will do our best to analyze each of the races and determine whether or not they are worth being. So today, let's look at the pros and cons, the benefits and detriments to being a red guard. Is being a red guard worth it. So before we dive into the topic itself, let's set some things straight. In the previous videos, we explained the parameters, but just to recap, we are making two assumptions to add some consistency to the evaluation. We are assuming that each race is born in their homeland, i.e. an Argonian in Blackmarsh or an Imperial from Cyrodiil, and we are also talking about a contemporary context, meaning the time of Skyrim, which is the 201st year of the Fourth Era. But that's all we need to know, time to get right into it. So for this video, if we were a in the Elder Scrolls universe that could choose to be any of the playable races, would being a Red Guard be worth it? Let's begin. The Red Guards were formerly known as the Yakudans, who as their name suggests, hailed from the lost land of Yakuda that sunk into the sea centuries ago. When the Red Guards arrived at Tamriel's shores, they came in a reign of violent slaughter, the Regarda, the Warrior Wave, and they quickly carved themselves out a new home, in spite of the local populations of Needs, Goblins, and any others who stood in their way. Their new territory would later become known as Hammerfell. The Red Guards, as they have since been called by the other races, are considered some of the greatest natural-born warriors to ever grace Tamriel. They have naturally athletic and muscular physiques combined with a resistance to poison and the ability to bring on an adrenaline surge that allows them to perform incredible feats of martial prowess, all of which naturally gives them a reputation as fearsome warriors. Combine their innate abilities with a culture that emphasizes martial prowess, honor, pride, and their fondness for the one-handed blade, then you have a recipe to create some of the best professional killers on Tamriel. So if you are planning on entering the world of Nern as a warrior, knight, or mercenary, then being born as a Red Guard seems to be a very good choice. Arguably, the greatest warrior of all time, Gaiden Shinji, was a Red Guard, and the Ansei sword singers from Old Yakuda were ridiculously powerful and skilled warriors, so much so that with pure focus and will they could generate a spirit sword from their very soul. But of course, it should be noted that Hammerfell is not only home to mere killers, but also astronomers, mathematicians, architects, and other intellectuals that are the envy of other cultures. Yakuta was a land ahead of its time in many of the sciences, and this knowledge can be seen in the Red Guard's sophisticated architecture and their ability to sustain civilizations in arid desert areas, despite the land working against them. But regardless of the fact that the Red Guards are not merely violent warriors, it took a long while for the other cultures to see them as anything other, considering the whole slaughter that went down when they arrived. This event, the arrival of the Regatta, for a long time colored foreign relations with their neighbors. Initially, they were quite isolationist and hostile to their neighbors, but over time, as the benefits of trade became clear, as well as their conquering at the hands of the Imperial Empire, they gradually became more diplomatic with foreigners. Red Guard society is primarily divided into two major political factions, known as the Forebears and the Crowns. The Forebears, the much more cosmopolitan and diplomatic types, have been the ones primarily behind the acceptance and integration with the rest of Tamriel. The Forebears are those who descended from the Yakutan warrior class, making up the majority of the Regatta, the warrior wave who first came to Hammerfell. The Forebears were exposed to many of the Nidic customs, traditions, and ideas that would later make up the cultures of the modern Bretons and Imperials. However, the other strata of Red Guard society, the Crowns, descended from the ruling class of Yakuta that arrived later, meaning the High King and the many nobles, the upper class essentially. These two halves of Red Guard society divide the more conservative and the more progressive political sides. The Forebears are far more accepting and seek modernity. They in particular benefited from their willingness to work with the Empire once they had been conquered. Their willingness to assimilate is very well shown in the fact that their pantheon has been 
altered to become more of a blend between the original Yakutan pantheon and the Eight Divines in an attempt to make common ground between the faiths. Whereas on the other hand, the crowns are far more nationalistic and isolationist, desiring to staunchly preserve their heritage and strictly worship the traditional Yakutan deities. This has naturally made it so forebears are predominant in coastal cities and major trade centers where there is more cross-cultural pollination, whereas the crowns tend to dominate the more secluded desert cities of the south. Tension between the two factions seems to have been part of Red Guard society since they first came to Hammerfell. However, in recent years, with an external threat greater than themselves, things have changed. The forebears and crowns united against the Aldmeri Dominion after the White Gold Concordate was signed and the Empire betrayed them. The forebears and crowns mostly set aside their differences in order to band together and fight off the elven invaders. It was this time in history that their martial prowess was truly tested and the Aldmeri Dominion was defeated, culminating in the signing of the Second Treaty of Stross Mackay. In the modern day, the 201st year of the Fourth Era, the crowns and forebears have been united in opposition to the Dominion after they pushed them back 20 years ago. While there is very likely some squabbles between the factions as is the usual, political stability within the region would be at an all-time high. So what does this mean if you were to choose to be a Redguard born in Hammerfell? Well, regardless of which side, forebears or crowns, that you align with or perhaps you were born into, it seems like now is the best time for peace between them. In addition, Hammerfell itself has shown its strength and repelled the Aldmeri Dominion, and on top of that, they also have the added benefit of now ultimate autonomy since the Empire abandoned them. This arrangement is probably something that the crowns love and ultimately I think Hammerfell at this time would be perfect for a Red Guard patriot who loves his gods and his country. So in terms of living in Hammerfell as a Red Guard, if you can deal with the heat then it sounds like a pretty sweet deal. And remember, it isn't just one giant desert, there would be beautiful coastal regions, some gorgeous savannas, even lush grasslands. Consider that Skyrim isn't just one giant iceberg, it's the same deal for Hammerfell. But let's discuss a little bit more about their society and some potential limiting factors. Like the Nords, Redguards are often very, very skeptical of magic. They absolutely abhor necromancy and the undead that rise from it, and along with it the shadier magic schools like Conjuration and Illusion are not looked upon with kindness. Undead and Daedra are not a Redguard's friend, and those who indulge communication with them and worship of them are not either. While the other schools of magic like Alteration, Destruction and Restoration may see some practical use as utilities, it would seem the culture is not particularly encouraging of pursuing such magical crafts. So ideally, if you were entering the Elder Scrolls world in hopes of learning magic and becoming some kind of master wizard, then Redguard is hardly the choice for you, especially if Conjuration and Illusion are the kinds of magic you would want to pursue. However, let's say you don't really care much about pursuing magical talents, well, then everything else is pretty much on the cards. I mean, you can likely have a career as a thief or assassin pretty much anywhere, but for all the other more legal pursuits, Hammerfell is a pretty great place. Be it builder, architect, farmer, sailor, trader, warrior, knight, opportunities are abundant. You have access to the wonderful trade and prosperity of the Iliac Bay to the north, as well as access to the Gold Coast of Cyrodiil to the south. Many port cities, ease of travel, and if you're traveling across the land and you love horses, well, you are in luck because Hammerfell is quite well known for its noble steeds. In particular, they are famous for their native breed, the Yakutan Charger. Riding horses is something Redguards have a great affinity for, and then consider that they also love their knightly orders, it would seem being a Redguard is a perfect fit for a life of chivalry. The Redguards don't possess a single standing military, but instead have many knightly orders, which make up the armies in times of strife. While you may not be wearing a heavy set of steel armor head to toe with a greatsword, you would be a knight in a traditional flowy light armor that is well suited to both the Redguard fighting style and the hot environment. Pair that with the Yakutan Charger Steed and you have the perfect experience as a Redguard Knight of Honor and Duty. Knightly pursuits and the love of heroism is something that is taught from childhood. The Book of Circles, written by Frandar Hunding, the spiritual leader of the Redguards, is a guide to both fighting with a blade but also to life as an ideal Redguard. Pretty much every household in Hammerfell has a little alcove near the hearth with a copy of this book. Now of course, as a human, Redguards don't have a fantastic elven lifespan, so that is a limitation but one that is shared with all men. However, their afterlife is a place 
place called the Far Shores, a beautiful paradise where no hunger nor thirst are experienced, and there are ample challenges for warriors to test their skill for all eternity. The last little bit to talk about that we pretty much always consider are the options for travel. Now, while in the past Red Guards may have had shaky relations with all its neighbors, this has not been the case for a long while. And as a Red Guard, I doubt you would have much trouble traveling to most places, at least not much more than any other human. Of course, there will be a little trouble with the Old Mary Dominion, likely because of their humiliation at Hammerfell's hands, but still a treaty has been signed, so there are no active war zones. But you're all there wondering, what? is my verdict. Is being a Red Guard worth it? Well, for myself personally, I think that being a Red Guard born in Hammerfell in the 201st year of the Fourth Era would ultimately be a pretty sweet deal, and I would 100% recommend if being a knight mercenary or any militaristic pursuits is your ideal life. But then again, academia is something that seems to be cherished here. Astronomy, science, architecture, all of these pursuits are something that could be quite ideal for your kind of life as an academic in Hammerfell. If you love working with horses, then Red Guard is for you. If you love sailing or trading, growing up on the coasts of Hammerfell and the Iliac Bay could be a good idea. The only case in where I wouldn't recommend living life as a Red Guard is if you were particularly into magic or wanted to become a mage or necromancer. You could be a mage Red Guard, but there are many other races, both man and elf, that would be a much more ideal situation. So what do you guys think about that assessment? Would you think being a Red Guard is worth it? How does a life in the warmth of Hammerfell suit you? Let me know in the comments below and also hit the like button if you are enjoying the series. Thanks so much for watching guys. Links to all the previous episodes are in the description, social media links as well. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Thanks again and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.